Imagine with me for just a moment, a school where every student, every staff member, and every administrator is operating in their zone of genius, where their strengths are celebrated and it's aligned to a shared mission. And what if the key to unlocking that was already within the team and it was just waiting to be discovered? Well, in today's episode, we're gonna explore how strengths-based leadership can transform your school, boost productivity, and unlock student achievement. So get ready, because by the end of this episode, you're gonna learn how to use strengths to turn your school into a powerhouse place of student achievement and growth and development. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes, because we're gonna start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes or content. Hey everybody and welcome in. So for a long time on this channel, throughout our time building this community, we've talked about Clifton Strengths. We've talked about strengths-based leadership. And I, you know, if you've watched these episodes, if you've been a member of this community for a while, you know that I am a true believer in the power of strengths and what it can do for you personally, professionally, and organizationally. So we really want to talk about how do we use strengths and how do we leverage strengths to grow and scale the impact that we have within our schools as we lead and as we lead more effectively by leveraging those strengths. So we're gonna share three strategies that will help you kind of unlock how to use Clifton Strengths and strengths based leadership to build your school, to build your culture, to get the results and to get the impact that you're looking for. And not only are we gonna give you the three strategies, but we're also gonna give you some, some concrete protocols, some concrete activities that you can use Starting tomorrow, if you want to implement these right away, you'll be able to take these strategies and take these activities and put them right into your practice right away. And it's gonna give you better results for you and for your students. So let's jump right in to strategy number one. The very first thing you wanna do, if you wanna to start to be committed to the work of strengths, be committed to what it means to be a strengths-based leader, you got to start with clearly identifying and leveraging individual strengths. We all have skills, knowledge, and talents. The things that naturally occur to us, the things that naturally just gravitate towards us, that we are just in flow when we're doing them. We all have them, and we're all different and unique. The Gallup assessment that you take says that if you want to look at your assessment, you want to look at your top five, for instance, that one out of every 34 million people have the same top five in the same order. So thinking about your top five is really like your individual strengths thumbprint. And so when you think about how do we, how do we recognize, how do we celebrate people's individual skills and talents? Well, first off, we have to know what people are bringing to the table. And then once we know what people are bringing to the table, then we want to figure out how do we honor them? How do we value them? How do we recognize? How do we amplify who they are? So they're engaged and they're excited to be a part of the team, to be a part of the organization. So when we start with strategy one and we think about how do we identify and then leverage those strengths? Well, first we have to explore. We have to, we have to figure out what those strengths are. So the first concrete activity that I want you to think about is conducting some sort of a strengths-based assessment, a workshop, an activity, but you really wanna have people first identify what their strengths are. And so you can get more information about Clifton Strengths assessments and protocols and how to get your strengths. You can check you know, the card either on this side or on this side, but this will give you some information about getting the assessment done. But you can put the assessment together very easily on your campus you can take people through it. You can have them discover what their strengths are. And then once people know what they are and you can identify them, then you can start to leverage them. You can start to know and understand what people do well, what their natural gifts and talents are, 
And then when they're excited because you give them talents, excuse me, you give them tasks that are aligned to their talents, you really start to see increased productivity, increased engagement, increased performance. All of that for the benefit of your students, all for the benefit of your staff, and all for the benefit of your school community. So when you first want to identify and then leverage those strengths, think about doing a conducting an actual workshop, getting those strengths assessments done so you know what people's top fives are, what their top tens are. You start to know what their strengths roadmap looks like. And that puts you on the path to be able to implement strengths-based leadership and Clifton Strengths into your school site and into your organization. That's strategy number one. All right, as we think about the second thing that we want to use or the second strategy that we want to use is we're building a strengths-based culture within our school or within our organization is we want to build a strengths-based culture. And so we want to we want to ask our folks to be clear on here's what strengths look like, here's how we honor them, here's how we value them, here's how we we want and we're going to recognize and we're going to push people to operate within their strengths. We're going to push people to use strengths-based language. We're going to ask people to do tasks that are aligned with their strengths, aligned with their talents. So the things that they naturally gravitate to and the things we naturally know that they do well, the things that we naturally do well ourselves when we're operating in a strengths-based culture, we're always looking for those opportunities to have people operate at their highest level. And so a concrete strategy is to start a strengths-based recognition program a strengths-based recognition kind of protocol, if you will, where we create a cadence for recognizing when people use their strengths, when we recognize when people have success using and harnessing and pushing forth with their strengths. So we do awards opportunities. We do recognition opportunities. We use the language and we talk through how people have used their strengths how they've leveraged them, why we want them to do more of that, why we want to reinforce that type of behavior. But we get really clear doing things on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis, where we amplify. We take a moment and we pause. And we amplify when people use their strengths because we want to reinforce and we want to build a culture that people know and understand that we operate in our strengths. We know it, we embrace it, we thrive when we use our strengths. That's what we are trying to build. And building culture is about intentionality. It's about time, effort, and energy. That's what it takes to build a culture. So it can't just be strategy one where we do the assessment and now people know their strengths, but we don't talk about them anymore. We don't recognize them anymore. We don't honor them anymore. No, building a strengths-based culture is knowing what they are, identifying them, leveraging them, and then speaking through them, talking about them, reinforcing them, building them into our language, building them into our, our speech, building them into the fabric of who we are as an organization and that culture, that culture building takes time. And recognition opportunities, verbally, programmatically, those are all ways that we build that culture. And then people know that strengths is not just this thing we do, but instead strengths and using strengths and strengths-based leadership is who we are. It's more than what we do, but it's who we are. And so thinking about how you build those recognitions in, thinking about how you build those opportunities for folks, think about how you value and honor them, that's gonna be key to implementing that into that strengths-based culture and that's strategy number two. All right, so before we move to strategy number three, just share with us in the comments below, you heard me talk about strengths recognition opportunities. What types of recognition systems could you put in place as you build a strengths-based culture? Share that with us in the comments below because we wanna, again, build this list, build this repository, build this, this cadre of information for folks because the more tips, tricks, strategies, and hacks that we give to folks, the more they can put into their toolkit, the more that they can actually add value to their school organizations. And so we do that through community. So 
share those ideas in those comments um, in the share those ideas and comments with us below and let's move to strategy number three. So as I think about strategy three and, and sharing that insight with you, I, I'm thinking through the lens of, of leadership. And one of the core tenets of all leadership is that we have to have vision. And as we have vision, then we have to have goal attainment. So as I think about strategy three, it's really going to be through that leadership lens. So strategy three is that you want to align your strengths with the school's goals. Now, in order to align strengths with the school's goals, first and foremost, you got to have vision. As a leader, we're communicating vision. We're visioneering out the future. We're building it as a shared mission. As a, <laughs> We're building it as a shared mission. And as I think about shared mission, we also have to remember that as we're building intentionally this culture around strengths, that in and of itself is not something that we do on our own but really driving towards strength-based culture is a shared mission. It's a shared direction, right? Everybody moving in that direction. So we think about how do we now take and take our strengths and align them with our school goals? Well, if we have our mission and we're moving forward, we have vision, we know where we're going. Now we can say, okay, what are the goals that we want to attain? And then let's align our strengths, the team strengths, what our staff naturally does well, what our teaching staff naturally does well, what our support staff naturally does well, their natural gifts, their natural talents. What are our students' strengths? What are they really gifted at? What do they naturally have as their set of assets? And then as we start to think about goals, like student achievement goals, and we start to think about things like social emotional learning and developmental goals, as we think, start to think about school site level financial goals, organizational goals, community-based goals. So we just want to make sure that we're aligning those goals with who we are. And so as we think about that, one of the things we want to do is have the ability to map our goals along with what our strengths are. So the concrete strategy is to have a mapping activity where we say, here are the natural gifts, talents, and strengths of our students, of our staff, of our community. Here are our goals. And how do we map these two things together to then figure out how do we leverage our strengths to achieve our goals? And these are shared collective conversations. We cannot have a, a goal mapping activity with our strengths in isolation. It cannot be the principal. It cannot be, it can't just be the instructional leadership team of the school. This has got to be a holistic approach because if we know that we're talented in, let's say we have a lot of strategic thinking, a lot of folks with strategic thinking themes in their top five or in their top 10. If we know we have lots of our students are really high in relationship building or influencing, we want to, we want to build strategies. We want to build assets, we want to build tools that will harness and leverage their natural gifts and talents. And so when we think about how do we build and align our strengths with the actual school level goals, it's got to be shared. It's got to be broadcast bro broadly with lots of folks, lots of people involved in those discussions. And then we build a robust plan where we map those goals to those strengths. And then we move intentionally, step by step towards harnessing, leveraging, and then building those, those strengths into the collective capacity of being able to achieve those goals. And that's really how we build this over, over time. Don't be in a rush. When we think about building and developing strengths into our culture, don't be in a rush. Strengths is a lifelong journey. Embrace it, embrace it for what it is, embrace it for what it can become. Clifton Strengths is a game changer. It has transformed the opportunity for me to lead. My own leadership is driven through a strengths based lens. And if you want to know more about leadership and leading through a strengths based lens, you can check out this next, sorry, this next video. I hit my microphone here. Check out this next video because that's going to continue to 
kind of unlock and share some ideas around the power of strengths when it comes to leadership. Because leading is the point. Helping people grow their leadership and their capacity in whatever role, formal or informal leadership role that they may have. We want to build more leaders, right? So you can check out that next video. Also, if you want more information about Clifton Strengths assessments, you can check the description below for information on assessments, for information on coaching, mentoring, our weekly newsletter that gives strengths-based tips and leadership information. You can check that out as well. And just remember, as you're building this, we're building this community of leaders. We want to inspire people to do more with respect to their leadership and the people that you influence and impact. So until we see you on the next one, take care of each other, take care of yourself, and be well, everyone. Thanks.